Today we're going to be diving back into Capture One. That's right. I've been listening. It's Capture One tutorial time. This tutorial is the Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every weekday, Tuesday, not weekday, it's not Tutorial Weekday, each and every Tuesday we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Now this week, we're diving back into Capture One. I know a lot of you have wanted more Capture One tutorials. We've got three on the channel so far, so getting started with Capture One, color grading with Capture One, and of course, working with layers in Capture One. But today, we are looking at specifically the healing and the cloning brushes within Capture One, how you can use them, use them to do things like skin retouching, remove things in the background, all kinds of stuff like that. They were actually a big part of quite a big update that came to Capture One a couple of months ago. So if you've already got Capture One, it's a free update. You just have to go and download it. If you don't have Capture One, I'll pop a link down in the description so you can go and check it out for yourself. It's definitely worth having a look at. It's a lovely piece of photo editing software. I really like using it. So that's why we're gonna do a load more tutorials on it, which brings me to my next point. Anything else you wanna see in Capture One, just pop it down in the comments and we'll make sure to do a tutorial all about it. But for now, Let's dive in to Capture One. So I've got a few photos that we're gonna be using, starting with this one here. Now, first of all, we're gonna start with the healing brush, how it works and what we can do with it. And we're actually gonna use it to remove these lines up in the top right of the photo here. Now, I assume they're wires. I hope they're wires. But we're gonna remove them. I wanna have a nice clear sky. And there's a couple of ways we can do that. But like I said, we're gonna use the healing brush to begin with. So first things first, we're gonna be working mostly in the exposure tabs. We've got all our sliders and our tools over on the left. We've got our thumbnails over on the right and we are in the exposure tab. Now there's no specific reason for that. We just need a tab open that has the layers at the top and I tend to default to the exposure tab to do that. But you can use the color tab if you're more comfortable in there or whatever you wanna use is absolutely fine as long as you have these layers at the top. And you can see we've just got the one layer, it's just the background image here. This was part of our forest portrait tutorial set. And we've actually got this photo we're gonna be working on. And then underneath the layers, we've got these different tools. So things like the different masks. So the kind of adjustment brush mask, the linear gradient mask brush, the radial gradient mask. And then next up, we've got the healing mask and the cloning mask. And we can use those to affect the image really quite well. So the first thing we do, we just select the healing brush here, the healing mask. And we're gonna go onto our photo. I'm gonna right click. I'm just gonna bring the size of the brush up a little bit. Now with the healing brush, I like to use the hardness at zero because it makes it much softer. And I think that works much better. It's a much more feathered edge. You don't have those hard edges. So zero, I always leave it at zero. And opacity and flow, we're gonna leave at 100. And then we're literally just gonna go onto our image here and left click and paint along this line. And a couple of things are gonna happen. Now the first thing you're gonna notice is over on the left, we've now got a new layer. It's called Heal Layer 1. And that's, Capture One has just made that layer for us so that all of our healing now is on this layer. Now we can create a new heal layer ourselves instead of having it happen automatically. We can just come down here to this plus icon, left click and hold, and you have the option to do a new heal layer or a new clone layer, or you can right click on that plus and it'll give you the same menu. But because we just started using the healing brush, it has automatically assigned that to a new heal layer, which is great for a few reasons. Primarily though, it means we can turn off that layer and turn it back on. We can adjust the opacity of that layer specifically. And it means we're working non-destructively, which means we can always go back to our original background layer. So you can see the second thing that's happened is as I've painted that on, it has begun to remove that line. There's still a couple of little bits we need to tidy up, but you can see there's an arrow pointing to it and a little circle here. And that is essentially where Capture One has taken the area that we've painted that onto, and it's tried to find another area of the image that it thinks matches up really well, so that it can just fill it in with information from this other area. So in this situation, it has taken this area here, and it wants to use the information here to fill in the area we've painted in. We can actually click and move this area here. So for example, let's put it there, and you can see it's going to affect what it looks like. If I put it onto the leaves, you can see it, it looks crazy, it looks like that. But let's move it back to the sky. And you can see as I do that, it's a much lighter kind of strip we've got there. But when we let go, it actually does some luminosity changes and, and blends it in really nicely. Now let's zoom in a little bit here. I think we're gonna have to do a little bit more work on the mask. So let's just left click 
and just start adding to that mask along the side there. And that's much better. That's now gotten rid of that line. There's another little thing up here, so I can left click and just do that. And you can see with new ones, it's just taking another area and filling that in. Now let's do that with this line as well. Let's just make sure we've got all of that. There we go. There's another line here. So let's just get that. Fantastic. And then there's another line here. It's a little bit thicker, so I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna do that. Right, so this is one where we just need to change the source point a little bit. And for the most part, I'd say Capture One does a fantastic job of, uh, of picking the source area for it to actually fill in the information. But every now and then you might want to just change it, especially if it's a more complicated area. And that's really easy to do. And then you can see here, if I turn this heel layer off and then back on, We've made a massive difference. We've gotten one of those lines and it looks great. Now let's turn it back on for a second. You might think as you're working, fill these lines, it's great, but it's just a little bit much. I can't really see what I'm doing. Well, that's no worries. You can right click and there's a little checkbox here that says display arrows. We just uncheck that. And now as you're working, they're no longer there. You can check it back on just by clicking that there. So that's really, really easy. Now let's go into another photo. That's how you can remove things from the background. But let's go to another photo. Let's go to this one here and do a little bit of skin retouching with it. Now we're not gonna go too crazy. I also think our model here's actually got really nice skin anyway, but we're not gonna go too crazy with it. Just, just kind of a good example that we can use. So once again, we've got the healing mask brush here selected. I'm gonna zoom in. I'm just using the scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom in. I'm gonna right click and just bring the brush size down a little bit. And then I can just start brushing on in the areas where I think there might be a slight blemish that we just want to remove. And you can see Capture One starts taking information from elsewhere. Now, a couple of times, a bit like here, we might want to move these ones up a little bit just because if they're coming from an area that's blurred out, like the neck there, that might not work quite as well. But we can just, we can just move that manually ourselves. And it works really, really well. It's like a super easy way to do a little bit of skin retouching. Let's zoom back out and just do a couple more bits before we move on to cloning. But you can see how easy this is. And the, the nice thing I think is that it's all within Capture One. So you're not having to take this into another program. It's not like you're starting one program and then move into another and come back. It's all within Capture One, so this is really nice. Now let's zoom back out a little bit. Let's turn that heel layer off and then back on. So you can see we've actually done quite a lot there. We've, in just a few clicks and just really a few seconds, we have done quite a lot of skin retouching and we could go on and really just get this exactly how we want and move on. But let's look at how cloning works as well. So let's actually turn off the heel layer there. And next to the healing brush mask here, we've actually got this cloning mask. Now let's click that. And when we go to click the photo, something different is going to happen. A little warning is going to come up saying that we need to define a source point. This is where cloning is a little bit different to healing. We actually need to define where that source point is going to be coming from that we're going to be cloning information over onto. So we can do that by pressing and holding Alt and left clicking. So let's left click her eye just to show you what I mean by that. So we've left clicked on her eye there. You can see a little sort of orangey yellowy circles come up there to show that as our source point. If I now start painting onto another area and let go, you can see her eye is gonna be brought over there. So cloning her eye into the new area. Now that's not what we want. So I'm gonna press Control Z to undo that. And let's just look at the settings I'm using here. So right clicking, I'm now using hardness zero still, but I've got my flow down to about 25 now. And that's because with the cloning, I like to be able to paint it on and build it up. And essentially what Flow does is say that when it's at 25, you're essentially painting your mask on at 25% opacity. But when you then go in and paint over it again, it's gonna be building it up, it's gonna be adding on to that. So you're actually able to start at 25 and slowly build up to where you want it to be. So it's almost easier with something like the clone brush to work with a slightly lower flow setting. So here we're gonna start with a flow of 25, and let's work a little bit on the eyes, just the area under the eyes. Now, I don't think it looks bad at all, but just for the sake of this tutorial, let's go ahead and press and hold Alt, and we're gonna select this area here, and I'm just gonna make a small bit of paint just there. 
I'm gonna select here, and I'm gonna do a similar thing just a little bit further along. And then over on the other side, I'm gonna select Alt, I'm gonna hold Alt and select here, and just do a little bit of painting there. And then Alt and select there, and just a little bit more painting. Alt and select here, and just a little bit more painting. And now when I, when I zoom out, Let's turn off that clone layer and then turn it back on. And you can see what I've done there with the 25% flow, so 25 flow, we've been able to just paint on the lighter skin area onto the area under the eyes to just brighten that up and just remove that a little bit, but without going so far that it looks totally unnatural. But something that's really nice about the way this works in Capture One, because it's assigned this to a new clone layer, just like with the heel layer, we can reduce the opacity of this layer. So let's bring that down. In fact, let's bring it down all the way and you can see what we've done. And then we can bring it up and we can, I think something like 85 is probably gonna be really quite natural and look really good. I think 100 actually looks fine in this case, but you can play around with it until it looks right. And then let's turn that heel layer back on. And you can see that really quickly, we have done a lot here to actually do a lot of skin retouching. And there's a lot of power that comes from combining the healing brush and the cloning brush for things like skin retouching, removing things in the background, just tidying things up. And this works for portraits, landscapes, all kinds of things. Anything where you might just want to tidy any tiny thing up. And like I say, it's fantastic because it's all in Capture One rather than have to jump between programs. Now essentially that is that is the basics, that is the essentials of using the healing and the cloning brush, the masks within Capture One. But if you do have any questions about them, pop them down in the comments below or any tips as well. If you use it a lot, pop them down there as well. That's always super handy and it's great. We can create this learning community. Now, of course, as I mentioned earlier in the video, if there's any other Capture One tutorials that you would like to see specifically, pop them down in the comments because there's loads that we can do, but anything you specifically want to see that really helps me out with kind of what to create and what tutorials we might want to make for you. So let me know down in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe as well and all the fun stuff that we tell you to do with these videos. I will of course see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.